Hello, and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a simple and speedy way to get your Chaos Cultists painted up and ready for using in your next game of Warhammer 40k or Kill Team. Throughout this video, we'll be using the 10 Cultists armed with auto guns from this nostalgic Warhammer Dark Vengeance set, but you can also use this scheme as a guide for Traitor Guard, a Necromunda Gang, or Cultists of the Abyss, which are great models for using in 40k as well as Blackstone Fortress. It's a real shame that these particular minis aren't in production anymore, as cultists are pretty useful for sitting on objectives. Although they'll now instantly wither if someone so much as points a gun in their general direction, at one point they were downright broken. And you can still do some fun stuff with them if you're bringing a badden, or even a dark apostle to the table. We'll only be using paints from this Vallejo starter set, so I'll leave a link to this in the description below, as well as all the other tools used throughout this video if you wanted to purchase any of them for yourself. First things first, we're going to spray on a layer of prime. I'm using grey here as I was still waiting for a black spray to arrive, but if you have a rattle can of this, or access to a paint gun, then I definitely recommend using these instead, as we're predominantly going to be keeping their clothing and weaponry black. If not, water down your black paint so that it's smooth and runs easily, grab a big soft brush and cover your minis all over with this. Allow your first coat to dry, then check over your minis for coverage. We want an even opaque coating. On these, we can still see that grey prime showing through, so I'm going to apply a second layer. Always opt for two or more thin coats rather than one thick one, as this could clog up fine details in your minis. Once you're happy with the coverage of your undercoats, allow your minis to dry and then add a drop or two of white paint to your black and then mix it into a dark grey colour. Get an old brush or an actual dry brush if you have one, thoroughly work this colour into the bristles and then wipe most of this away on a piece of kitchen roll or similar paper. Then we want to lightly drag this all over the minis like this. You want to only catch those raised areas in the clothing, so make sure you're not applying too much of this paint and keep your brush strokes light. Apply this most heavily to the top where light will be hitting the unit. We should then have something like this, where the clothing just has a bit more variety to it and doesn't look as flat as it did with only the black undercoat. We can see this more clearly if we bring in one of the minis we haven't dry brushed on the right here. Add a touch more white to your grey paint to make it even lighter, or use a light grey paint, and we can use this on our bases. I used PVA to attach some basing materials to the bases prior to priming to help hold them in place. Absolutely not necessary to do this step, but I'll pop a link in here to another video where we make these basing materials if you wanted to replicate this very cheap and easy basing style. We can, however, use the same colour on a few bits of cloth. I'm using it to paint the gaiters on this cultist for example, as well as the trousers of this one. Just pick out a few areas here and there on each of your cultists for this, as we want to keep the overall tone suitably dark, but want to add in some variety with shades such as this. Next up, get a flesh tone if you have one and thin it down. I found that the included flesh tone in this Vallejo set was way too bronze, so I've mixed mine here 50-50 with an off-white bone colour until it created a colour like this. We want to then go through all our cultists and apply this to any exposed flesh, like on the heavy stubber mini here. You can also see that I painted this apron with that grey colour from the previous step too. As we're applying such a light colour over a black undercoat with this flesh tone, we're going to paint on one thin layer, allow it to dry, and then apply another coat over the top like this. If we compare these side by side again, we can see how much of that undercoat is showing through on the cultist on the right. So we're going to go back over those arms and hands now with a second thin coat of our flesh tone mix. Next up, get your red paint, thin this down as well, and much like the grey from before, we're going to select a few bits of cloth on the minis and apply two thin coats of this. 
These cultist models have lots of these separate layers to their clothing, so we can paint a few of these and leave the rest black just to add some variety to our models. If you have a particular colour scheme for your Chaos Army, you could replace the red here with an accent colour to suit your faction, such as pink for the Emperor's Children, blue for Thousand Sons, or perhaps even more red than this if you're a devotee of corn. I'm also giving this loincloth a coat of red too. And just dropping a dab of it carefully to the lens on the mask. So we can mix and match these colours. There are duplicates of each sculpt in this set, and as you can see here, I painted alternative bits of cloth in red and grey so they at least don't have the exact same appearance. After you've got all the cloth in grey, red, or an alternative accent colour, we can then switch over to a leather brown and use this to coat any pouches, holsters, or belts on our minis. No worries if we slip up while trying to coat these small details, as we'll go back over these models later to tidy them up and paint any parts we may have missed to. I also painted the wrist armour on this cultist with brown to make them look like they are undyed leather, and carefully applied a touch to the straps around the face mask of the heavy stubby unit, and the straps holding their backpack on. I applied brown to the gaiters on this cultist as well, to similarly look like they are leather, and to make them different from their clone on the right. Next up, grab a darker brown paint, and we can use this to paint any hair on the minis, as well as any wooden parts on the cultists, like the heavy stubber mini here, who has this mallet slung across their backpack. As well as the stock and grip on the leader's shotgun. I also wanted to point out that this model's coat looked incredibly reminiscent of a Commissar's coat, so I painted the interior of this with red, and left the rest black, so that they resemble a traitorous guardsman. Couple more details here to paint, so get a light green, and use this on any pouches or backpacks you may not have painted yet with any of your other colours, just to give it a militaristic feel to your cultists, like on the heavy stubber mini here. Get your blue paint next, and use this on any cables or wires on your minis, like these that are plugged into the face mask of this cultist. And on this one too. You can also use a touch of this blue on a few lenses as well, for a little more variety. Onto our metallics now, and we'll start off with gunmetal. Add just a touch of water to this, so that you have around one part water, of four parts paint, and we're going to use this on all the metal parts of our cultist guns, like the barrels, and clips, as well as any clasps, buckles, chainmail, or accessories like this chaos symbol around their neck. If you're fielding an army which has a shiny metallic paint scheme, such as Alpha Legion, you can use your armor color here instead to thematically link your cultists in with the rest of your forces. Or, you could use the metallic accent from your army, so, if you're fielding Black Legion, these symbols could be gold instead. Go through your cultists and paint any other metallic areas with this gunmetal colour too, such as the fan system on the back of this mini, and the shotgun and sword of the leader. And the weapons, accessories and mask on the heavy stubber. Continuing on with the metallics, and we're going to apply a bit of gold to our units now, particularly the leader here, who has these very imperial looking pauldrons. As well as the hilt of their sword. And, carefully, a touch on the buttons of their coat. We've applied all that paint now, 
so it would be a good time to go back through your minis and cover over anything we might have forgotten. I noticed during the last stage while I was painting the leader that I hadn't painted their face or chest, so since that flesh tone was being kept fresh on my wet palette, I'm going back over those areas. And just going back over their coat with black too, where I slipped over with the gold paint before. I'm also going to cover over a few slip ups on the Heavy Stubborn Mini 2 with this black paint. Also forgot to paint the pouches and belt on this cultist, so just going to cover these now with our leather brown. And there we go, a unit of 10 cultists painted up and ready for applying some wash. We'll start off with a brown wash. I'm using the Army Painter washes that you can find in the description or any other alternative from another manufacturer will work just as well. We're going to use this colour on any flesh, leather, red cloth and those gold accessories on the leader. Try to paint whole areas in one go to avoid any tide marks and if it starts to pool in any one area we can keep another brush on standby to absorb this. Let this dry and then we can move on to a black wash. We're going to use this on any grey or black cloth, as well as all those areas we painted with gunmetal, so the robes of this mini for example, as well as the clip, muzzle and housing of their auto gun. We can really throw this on and get through our models quickly here. Also going to apply a bit to this chainmail too, which will add a nice amount of shading between those links. And that's it! Our cultists have all been painted and had a good coat of shade to bring down the starkness of those base paints. These are now tabletop ready, but if you have the time we can add a few highlights too, just to make them a little bit more visually interesting. We'll start by getting our off-white bone colour, watering it down a little more than usual so that it dries quite translucent, and then just use this to pick out the most raised details on the unit's exposed flesh. In particular, we want to use this colour on any scar tissue on our minis, such as the chaos symbol on this one's shoulder. Try to keep this out of the recesses, as we want those areas still in shadow, so only get this on the most raised parts, like muscles, elbows and knuckles. Next, mix a little white into your black to make a dark grey, or use a dark grey paint if you have one, water it down again, and then use this on the most raised parts of black cloth such as the edges and folds on the leader's coat. We can also apply this to the upper edges of weapons to replicate where the light could be hitting the mini. We can do the same thing on our other cultists too, where we've left their clothing black just to lift the colour a little more on these units and make them a bit more striking. Get your red paint again next, add in a little bit of yellow to brighten it and add warmth, and then we can use it in a similar fashion to pick out the most raised creases in the cloth that we've painted red. Again, we just want to apply this on those raised parts and keep it away from the recesses to keep them in shadow. We'll then do the same with our grey. There's no need to lighten this one any further, as this cloth will be quite dark from that black wash. Just water your grey down a little more than usual, and repeat what we did for the black and red areas, like I'm doing with the trousers on this cultist. Get your yellow paint again, add a drop into your leather brown so it's lighter and warmer, and then use this to catch any raised parts or edges on the pouches, belts, and leather parts of armour like the gaiters on this cultist, as well as their braces here. Onto our metallics again next, and using a silver paint, we can pick out any buttons or studs with this colour, as well as adding a line or two on edges of areas we've painted gunmetal to simulate light glinting off these areas, as well as scuffs or battle damage. While we have this paint still wet on our palette, we can add in some of our gold, and then use this colour to highlight the areas we've painted gold, such as the edges and raised parts of the leader's pauldrons and along the top of their sword hilt. And 
and we're done. A squad of cultists ready for games of 40k and kill team that'll make great objective holders. Or more likely cannon fodder. They could also be used as a chaos themed gang in a game of Necromunda, as there must be some sort of compelling backstory for why they have hints here and there that they were once part of the Astra Militarum. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. We've painted these cultists using just a few colours from one box of paint. By applying key colours to different areas on our minis, they look different enough so that the duplicated sculpts aren't all exact replicas of each other. But using the same accent colours throughout means that they are unified and look like a cohesive unit on the tabletop. There'll be more Warhammer 40k videos being released in the future, so please do keep an eye out for more content coming soon to Jamhammer. In the meantime, there are plenty of other videos available on the channel, including a few that are on screen now for you to click on. Thanks again for watching.